Hi, I'm John from Offroad CC, and this is the Boardman MHT 8.9. If you're looking for a bike at around £1,000, you're actually really spoilt for choice now, but Boardman is a consistent favourite with us for high value bikes. And despite being at this relatively low price point, this MHT 8.9 is actually the range topper of their hardtail range. So for your £1,000, you do get quite a lot. First up is this very smart looking aluminium frame, which if you squint at it, thanks to these smooth welds, actually almost looks like a carbon fibre bike and I personally really like the paint job. You've got good tyre clearance, you've got all mod cons, so you've got a properly tapered steerer for an extra stiff fork, you've got a boost rear end with a through axle for extra security, and also on 120mm RockShox fork up front, you also have a through axle there, so it is a modern frame in terms of these details. Another great thing to see on a bike at this sort of money is the wide range single ring drivetrain. So this bike gets a SRAM SX Eagle group set, uh, which has a 32 tooth chainring up the front, and then a huge 11 to 50 spread at the back with 12 ratios. The SRAM goodies continue in the braking department. The level T brakes might be their basic models, but they've got a great lever shape. They offer good amount of feel and really respectable power too especially as Boardman has chosen to fit 180mm rotor up front and 160mm item at the back. While it'd be really nice to see a dropper post at this sort of money, it's not surprising this bike doesn't have one. Uh, again, they're expensive. If you spend another couple of hundred quid on bikes at this similar level, you can expect to see one. But this bike does have routing for an internally routed dropper and it has a larger diameter seat post, so you should get your pick of the dropper posts. Um, budget another 100, 150 pounds for an all right drop post to put on this and that will really make a really big difference to how this bike rides. So it's got around 740 millimeter wide bars which aren't huge but certainly aren't too narrow. It's got a fairly dinky 50 millimeter stem and also I really like this it's got proper lock on grips because a lot of budget bikes they can try and cut corners and areas like this and having revving grips is not an experience that you want to have. Boardman pitches this bike as the kind of middle ground between a trail bike and a cross country bike, saying that it'll be equally happy doing big distance days out as well as trail riding. And I would broadly agree with that. However, if you're getting a little bit of a trail bike, it's mostly still a cross country bike. That in part is due to the very fa fast rolling rubber that they fitted. Uh, Vittoria's Barzas are 2.25 inch wide on the 29 inch rim. They're also tubeless ready, as are the Boardman own, man, own brand wheels, which is a very good thing. That's one of the first things you upgrade. But if you prefer to ride wet, muddy, natural, rooty and rocky terrain, you will find the limits of these tyres very quickly. Um, they are a massive handful in the wet, especially the one up the front. So if you prefer to lean towards kind of more natural trails, you're gonna need some tyre upgrades, definitely on the front end. If you're still doing trail centres, then they'll be all right. They aren't the most confidence inspiring of tyres all round, but they do roll quickly. So if your priorities lied with doing big distance at big speeds, rather than kind of getting rad on the descents, uh, it's a good setup. That is also reflected in the frame geometry, which is on the conservative side. With a 440mm reach for this size large frame, it is a relatively short bike. Um, I'm about 172cm tall, um, I'm riding this large, and this is actually the largest frame size they do. So there's only three sizes, small, medium, and large. I'd say if you're over six foot, you're gonna feel fairly cramped on this bike. A bit more of an issue when it comes to like trail riding, trying to push your limits a little bit downhill, or indeed on anything more than fairly flat gradients, is that this bike has a fairly steep 68 degree head angle. I mean, it's fine if you want to weave it through single track fast, and if you really enjoy that kind of fast, twitchy bike feel, then I'm sure you'll get on with this bike. I've got to say that I found it quite hard work once the gradients start to tip downwards, and I just lacked that confidence in the front end to be able to like push on and just start to make progress. It felt like the bike really wanted to tuck a little bit. I mean, some of that is this fork is relatively long-legged and fairly skinny. It's a 32 millimeter chassis rather than the butcher 30, 35 mils that you're starting to see on a lot of bikes now. But even so, the frame geometry is relatively conservative. So is this bike right for you? Well, that really depends on what sort of rider you are. 
if you prefer to kind of get rad in the local woods, skid about there, maybe do some trail centre reds and blacks, uh, you're not too worried about, you're more of fun than a distance person, then maybe this bike will be a bit conservative for you. There are other options out there that'll probably satisfy your needs better than this machine. However, if you're a proper dyed in the wool, big distance, super high speed rider, you'll probably love the Boardman MHT 8.9. It's kind of got everything you need. It's really good value. It's got some good kit on it, and it's a very impressive weight for the money too. This one tipping the scales at 12.8 kilos. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have liked it, well, give us a like. And uh, if you want to see more content like this, then subscribe. Thanks, bye-bye.